what's good so i'm just gonna jump right into this video because i have a lot of stories to tell here are my worst and most embarrassing audition stories Okay, so I'm gonna start off with an audition. It was a commercial audition. There was a copy with sides for this audition. And what that means is that this particular commercial audition had lines that you, need to, you needed to say. Uh, most commercial auditions are like improv, like they just give you a situation and you just live in that situation. But um, a lot of commercial auditions still have you like say lines. So before this commercial audition, I had a really big TV audition for a really big role. So I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna focus on this commercial audition because for commercial auditions that do have lines, there's usually like a huge board in the casting room that has all the lines on it anyways. I was like, well, whatever. I'm just gonna like go in and just read it off, like do do what I do and so I walk into this casting room right after my TV audition and it's like a conversation between two friends it's a commercial for like I think it was like a birth control or something like that or maybe it was an abstinence commercial I don't know it was something about we're, we're two friends talking about pregnancy and sex or whatever so it was like a really nice conversation like you know a conversation you'd have with your best friend in high school about sex and giving birth, pregnancy. So I'm like looking at my partner and as I look over to read my next line, I see that my next line says something a little bit questionable. And I wasn't sure how to move forward, but the show must go on. I was a little taken aback and surprised by what was on this board. But like I said, the show must go on. So I got my line, looked at my partner, and said what the board said. So sometimes I let him fuck me in the ass. And after the scene was all over and finished with, the casting director said, that was great, that is exactly what we were looking for. And I was like, cool later so that's just one audition story that I have to tell not really bad or embarrassing but just a little a uh, little questionable uh, something that I have never experienced before in an audition oh my god okay no I have to tell you about my very first commercial audition like my very first, this is my very first commercial audition. I didn't have a commercial agent yet. It was for a really large brand, like a very huge brand that is most known for their shoes. So it's a very large brand, most known for their shoes, but they make clothing too. So I am like, I'm so nervous. Like this is my first commercial audition. Um, I've never had a commercial audition before. I'm like so naive. I don't know like how to act. Don't know what I'm doing. So they bring me into the casting room with, I think there was like three other people before me. Now keep in mind that the concept of this commercial was like about like edgy rebellious young people that um just like break a whole bunch of rules and they're just like really cool and rebellious so that was the that's the concept of this commercial and they told and they told us that so if you've never had a commercial audition before you know that when they tell you something like that the way that you act and the way that you answer questions needs to be on brand of the concept or what they just told you I didn't know you were supposed to do that. I was just like, oh cool, that's the concept, whatever. <laughs> okay, so they start going down the line and um, he asks us our name and we tell him our names and then he's like, what's something you like to do for fun? Right? A simple question, but you have to answer it on brand. I didn't know that. So everyone's answering the question very on brand. Like people were like, yeah, I do like extreme sports. I go snowboarding. And then another one was like, yeah, I like graffiti walls for fun. And the guy next to me was like, I do parkour. Like I do like hardcore parkour. I jump off of buildings. <laughs> and then the casting director gets to me and he was like, what do you like to do for fun? And me being 
totally oblivious to the pattern that was happening right beside me. I was like, um, well, you know, I like to eat food with my friends. <laughs> and the casting director was like, okay. He was trying to coerce me into saying something a little bit more extreme. So he was like, Oh, well, do you like, do you like, uh, sushi? Do you, have you ever tried live squid before? And I was like totally oblivious to the hints that he was throwing at me. Like the very obvious hints he was throwing at me. And so I was like, uh, no, 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 no. Um, I like, um, I like Taco Tuesday and I love like, there's this really good Asian fusion place right by my house. I really like going there with my friends. And the casting director and everyone else in the room was like, she just sabotaged her own audition. <laughs> Literally the simplest audition ever are those type of commercial auditions and I ruined it on my own accord. But you know what? We'll just let that one go. Okay, so I'm, now I'm going to tell you the, the absolute worst audition that I've ever had where I ended up booking the job. This was the worst audition from like beginning to end, from the moment I woke up in the morning to the end of the audition. The worst I've ever had, but I booked it. So I got this commercial audition on a Saturday. Why do people have auditions on Saturdays? I don't know. Um, I was a little annoyed, but an audition is an audition. So I was really excited because it's a job opportunity. It's like a job interview. Because this audition was on a Saturday, I was not expecting there to be that much traffic, right? Wrong. So I left my house thinking that I was going to arrive at the casting office in like 45 to 50 minutes. There was a huge accident on the freeway. I was sitting in traffic for two hours. Because I was sitting in traffic for two hours, I was about an hour late to my audition. So after sitting in traffic for two hours, being late to my audition, after trying to find street parking in Los Angeles on a Saturday near a shopping center, took me a while to find parking. So after I did find a spot that was like four blocks away. I literally ran. I ran to this audition. So I walked into the office. I was so late that usually when I have commercial auditions, I like go to the bathroom and I like make sure I'm like looking good. You know, my makeup's on point. I'm not sweating, but I was one hour late. So I didn't have time to do that. So I'm like here, like sweating, like my mascara was probably running down my face. Like I didn't look, I did not look presentable in any way to be appearing on camera. <laughs> but I was finally here, I showed up. <sighs> Not only was I sitting in traffic for two hours, which there's a certain type of restlessness that comes from sitting in traffic for two hours, especially when you have ADHD like I do. So I, not only was I sitting in traffic for two hours, not only was I one hour late, not only did I spend 30 minutes trying to find parking, not only did I run four blocks to get here, not only do I not look presentable in any way for this audition, I find out that I'm wearing the wrong outfit. I did not realize that the wardrobe notes on the audition notice said, please wear tank top and shorts. So I walked into that casting room wearing a bodysuit and high-waisted pants. I did. And just when you thought it couldn't have gotten any worse, they were looking for people with tattoos, which I do not have. So when I walked in the room, he was like, oh, okay, how many tattoos do you have? And I was like, zero. And he was like, okay, that's fine, I guess. So I now have about six things working against me and the audition hasn't even started yet. He hasn't even asked my name yet. The audition, nothing has happened yet. So there's no feeling other than absolute optimism about this audition. I know I'm gonna book the job right in this exact moment. I do, I know it for a fact. 
So he asked my name and then he asked me, what do you like to do for fun? And by this point, I'd already been auditioning for a long time. So I've kind of leveled up in these type of auditions from that original train wreck. So I was like, yeah, I love music, so I like going to concerts, I love hiking, you know, blah, 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 whatever. So then he was like, okay, that was great. Uh, now I'm going to play some music, and then you're just going to dance for 30 seconds or until I stop the music. And I was like, okay, great. These type of auditions happen all the time. They ask you a question, and then they have you dance for like 30 seconds. This happens literally all the time. So I'm thinking he's gonna play some music that you can really get down to. Like I'm thinking he's gonna play like Bruno Mars, like Uptown Funk, like I'm thinking I'm about to get this poppin', you know what I'm saying? He plays King Kunta by Kendrick Lamar. But you know, I, I could see how one could dance to that. That wouldn't be my first option, but I could, I could dance to King Kunta by Kendrick Lamar. So not only was that song choice just already pretty questionable, he played the 20 seconds of the song, the only 20 seconds of the song, that doesn't have any music playing. I, I need to play this for you, because like you're not going to know what I'm talking about until you listen to it. Motherfucking king! Oh yeah! Bitch, where are you in now? By the time you hear the next pop, the folk shall be within you. Now I'm gonna get get the whole world talking. So what happened was he was just replaying the song over and over again and he was just like pressing the space bar like, oh, first person, okay, stop. So the next person would start dancing wherever the last person left off. And it just so happened that the person before me left off right where that music stopped playing. And so he played the music and I was trying to dance to it. I was like, like, what am I supposed, what am I, what am I doing here? So I'm thinking, you know, me, the casting director is going to notice that this was a mistake and that he's going to just replay the song or play literally any other part of the song. But no, he just keeps playing it. And I was, I was still just looking all just really confused and not really knowing if this is gonna work at all but you know what I already had eight things working against me could it get any worse so he stops the music and he was like cool thanks and I was like thanks I know for a fact that I booked this job so I went home and about three days later, my agent called me and he was like, I need a picture of your legs. And I was like, why? <laughs> and he was like, well, you were put on hold for this audition that you had on Saturday. And they said that you wore pants instead of shorts. So they need, they need to see your legs. And I was like, <laughs> I'm on hold for it. Okay. <laughs> so I took my picture of my legs cause I was wearing the wrong outfit and um, I sent it to him and I booked it. So, um, moral of the story here, folks. Even when you're doing your worst, you could be doing your best. No, the real moral of the story is don't get so caught up in your mistakes because there's a million reasons why you do or do not get something. Uh, I don't know what else could I say. Oh! Okay, this isn't technically an audition, but I'm just gonna tell it anyway. <laughs> so I'm gonna tell you the time I met Drake. Wow, oh, that was really, that was really good. Um, so this was a very long time ago. I was like 18 or 19 years old. I, I was, I was 19, I think. So, <laughs> whew, I don't even remember where we were. It was, I think we were filming a music video audition. I literally don't even remember. But anyway, I was in, I was in a hallway, and you know, just standing there, minding my own 19 year old business, and Drake walks up to me. Listen girlies, I don't get starstruck. I work with celebrities all the time. I just don't get starstruck. But this impressionable and naive 19 year old was a little shook by the biggest rapper in the world coming up to talk to her. She was, she was, she was a bit shook. So this man, this random man, comes up to me and the first words out of his mouth were, how old are you? 
which is a question I should be completely used to. I look so young, people think I'm like 16, and people ask me, how old are you all the time? But for some reason, I, I was just, I was so taken aback by this question, by this whole encounter, by the face, by the whole encounter. So like, I just, I couldn't think of anything, but you know, the show must go on. I needed to say something in a very timely manner. So thinking I was cute and quirky, you know, I was like, old enough. You know that white man laugh that Drake does? You know that? <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing that you said that. <laughs> so he did that and then walked away. So the entire mm, eight second encounter went a little something like this. So how old are you? Old enough. <laughs> and I was literally just standing there like. But I will say though, that was a very smart move on his part to ask that question. Did that question really benefit me at all? No, not at all. But he is very smart person for, for asking that type of question and I gained a lot of respect for him. <laughs> he doesn't even remember that, but I absolutely do. Okay, uh, you know, this isn't actually an audition either, but I don't think I've ever told this story, so uh, whatever, I'm just gonna tell it. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with a K-pop group called BTS. Even if you're not familiar with them, they're, ju they're just a, like a really huge K-pop boy group. Back in November, wow, that was already a year ago. But anyway, back in like November of 2015, I filmed a music video for a Korean um, rap artist named Zico. And when the music video got released, I posted some questionable content on Instagram and Twitter, got a lot of attention. Um, maybe you've seen what happened, <laughs> but whatever, after that whole ordeal, um, there were a lot of K-pop fans following me and a lot of K-pop fans like tweeting me. So they just started tweeting me. They're like, oh, well, you know, since you go here now, why don't you check out this group? Why don't you check out this music video? Listen to this song. When the music video got released in December, it was like uh, winter break, so there were no auditions. There, were, Everyone was out of town. There was nothing going on. I was so bored. And so people were like sending me links to like watch music videos, look at like these groups, listen to this music, and I, I clicked on all of them. I watched and listened to pretty much everything. If you tweeted me a link to a video, back in December of last year, I watched it. Like I literally watched everything that anyone sent me. <laughs> so anyway, I was, you know, watching all these music videos and after like the 28th music video, I was like, you know, I actually can't do this anymore. <laughs> but right at that moment, while I was checking Twitter again, someone tweeted me and was like, hey, you should watch this reality show called American Hustle Life with this group BTS. And I was like, Okay, <laughs> so I watched it. So I watched the um, the first episode, and as the episodes were, you know, coming along, I was thinking to myself, like, this concept sounds really familiar. Like, I'm, j I'm, I just feel really familiar with this premise. Like, a Korean K-pop boy group in Los Angeles and they're dancing, and they're filming a music video, sort of, but not really. I was like, this... Am I having deja vu? Like, this sounds really, really familiar. <laughs> Rewind to the summer, maybe, like, the summer of 2014. One of my favorite casting directors in LA wanted me to... pretty much, like, be on this, on this reality show. And already, hearing the words reality show, I was like, no. <laughs> he was like telling me all these things like, yeah, it's for a K-pop group. They're filming a reality show here in LA. And I was like, um, okay. The way that it, they explained it was just like so weird. But they're like, yeah, but it's a music video, but like it's for, it's for TV. And I was like, 
okay, well, I mean, they show music videos on TV all the time. So, like, what are you talking about? What does this have to do with a reality show? Like, I just, I couldn't understand what exactly it was that they were filming. So I was like, eh, no, that's fine. I don't even want to do this. And also, because I don't even know who this group is. Like, who is BTS? I don't know. <laughs> like, whatever. So I... That was just a distant memory by this time. So while I was watching this TV show, I got to the episode where they were filming a music video in LA. It was like a challenge. They had to like find girls to cat, like whatever. It was like this whole thing. And I was like, hmm, this is interesting. This, this is a very familiar premise. I have definitely heard of something like this before or have seen something like this before. And then it all clicked. Oh my god, I was supposed to be in this. <laughs> but anyway, yeah. That wasn't really embarrassing. I actually don't even know why I just told that story, but now you know. <laughs>